So in his letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul calls upon all Christians to pray continuously without ceasing. And that sounds really nice for maybe someone who's a priest or a deacon or a monk or something like that. But how on earth are we supposed to live up to that as Christians in the year 2021? How are we supposed to find the time to do that? Well, that's exactly what the daily office is designed to help us do. This is an ancient, beautiful form of prayer that in so many ways I think is the antidote for our times. A great way to incorporate more prayer and scripture reading into our day-to-day -day lives. So let's talk about it. Hi everyone, my name is Brendan. I'm the Director of Christian Education at St. John's in Duxbury, Massachusetts. And today I want to talk to you all about the daily office. This is a beautiful form of prayer and a great devotion for people who are trying to incorporate more scripture, more prayer, and a deeper relationship to God in their day-to-day -day lives. The daily office, very simply, is a set of prayers that are meant to be said at various times throughout the day. As Episcopalians, we're invited to pray four times throughout the day, and we call these sets of prayers holy hours. The four hours in the Episcopalian tradition are matins, or morning prayer, noonday prayer, evening prayer, which is also called evensong, and finally night prayer, which is called compline. And these sets of prayers consist of readings from scripture, readings from the book of Psalms specifically, as well as canticles from the gospels and other books of the Bible, as well as really simple foundational prayers like the Our Father and the Apostles' Creed. And all that you need to pray the daily office is a book of common prayer and a Bible. Of the four holy hours that Episcopalians are invited to pray every day, the most common by far, and certainly the most important, I think, are matins and evensong. That would be morning and evening prayer. Today we're going to talk about morning prayer, and next week we're going to put out a new video on evening prayer. Before we pray the daily office, there's a couple of things that I think are a good idea to get ourselves ready. The first is very practical. You should definitely have your Bible and your Book of Common Prayer very close at hand. More than that, it's really important to have a couple of bookmarks ready to keep track of the various parts of the Book of Common Prayer that we're going to be flipping between. It's best to keep four bookmarks in the Book of Common Prayer when getting ready to pray the daily office. One at page 75, which is the set of prayers for morning prayer. Another at page 115, which is the set of prayers for evening prayer. Another at page 585, which is the Psalter, the Book of Psalms. And finally, one at page 936, which is the daily office lectionary. The second thing to do to prepare to pray an hour of the daily office would be to set aside a place in your home for prayer. Behind me is my home altar, which maybe sounds very fancy, but all it is is the top of a bookcase where I've placed some candles and obviously hung a crucifix. And to me, this is a nice visual reminder that I have a place set aside in my home dedicated to prayer. This dedicated holy place within your home could be something as beautiful and intricate as a decorated home altar, or it could simply be a chair in your living room where you know you have a really nice view and you can be really close to God and the beauty of God's creation. The next thing would be to make sure you set aside enough time to pray the daily office in its entirety without getting interrupted. Now, traditionally, morning prayer is prayed right at sunrise, and evening prayer is prayed at sunset. Now, that isn't always uh, practical for a lot of reasons. I myself often find myself praying morning prayer around 8.30 a.m. after I've had my first cup of coffee, which is, you know, a couple of hours after the sun has come up. And for evening prayer, I'll often find myself praying in the evening after I finished up my work for that day and had some dinner, and it might be as late as 9 or 10 o'clock at night. The important thing is that you find a time where you know you're not going to have any interruptions, a time when you're not going to be expecting a phone call or maybe a work email that you're going to have to respond to. Once you have all those things set up, all you got to do is turn to your Book of Common Prayer and your Bible and get ready to do some praying. So let's dive into doing some morning prayer together. The first thing you'll want to do is turn to page 75 in the Book of Common Prayer. Here you'll find a list of various verses from Holy Scripture. You can say any number of these verses to get yourself ready for prayer. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. After that, on page 79, there's the confession of sin. This is optional, but a great way to start out the day by acknowledging our sin and our weakness and turning to God's mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, in what we have done, and by what the we have The confession of sin, undone. along with all the prayers in the daily office, can be said silently in your heart, spoken out loud, or chanted. After the confession of sin, if you choose to say it, 
you'll turn to the Invitatory and the Psalter, which starts on page 80. The Invitatory begins with the prayer, Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise, followed by the Gloria Patri. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We will then say the first three strophes or verses of Psalm 95, which can be found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us approach with praise and thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. After the invitatory, we're going to pray the appointed psalms for that day. To find that day's appointed psalms, you'll have to turn to the Daily Office Lectionary. The Daily Office Lectionary is organized by the various weeks throughout the liturgical year. If you're not sure which week of the liturgical year we're in, you can find a link in the description of this video that will bring you to the Episcopalian liturgical calendar. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortunes of Jacob. In the daily office lectionary, you'll see that there are various scripture verses and readings assigned to each day. Above those assigned readings, you'll see that there are just some simple numbers listed out. These numbers correspond to the appointed psalms for that day. The ones to the left of the little star symbol are for morning prayer. The ones to the right of the star symbol are for evening prayer. After you see what the appointed psalms are for that day, you'll turn to the Psalter to pray those psalms. After you have prayed the appointed psalms for that day, you'll turn again to the daily office lectionary to find the assigned readings for that day. For each day, there is an Old Testament, a New Testament, and a Gospel reading. If you're planning to say the daily office twice in a given day, it's traditional to say the Old Testament reading in the morning and the New Testament reading in the evening. After we see what the appointed reading is, we turn to our Bible to do that reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. After we've completed that day's reading, we then turn to page 144 to find that day's assigned canticle. There are different appointed canticles for morning and evening prayer, and one's assigned to be said after the Old Testament reading, and one's assigned to be said after the New Testament reading. Once you find out what the appointed canticle is, turn to page 85, and there is the text of all of the canticles. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. Following that, we say the Apostles' Creed, which is followed by the Lord's Prayer. We then say the suffrages. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. After the suffrages, we say one or more of the colics assigned to that hour. You'll see that Sunday, Friday, and Saturday have specific colics for that day. When it's not a Sunday, Friday, or Saturday, you can choose whichever collect you wish. After the collects, you can sing a hymn if you wish. The hymns for the daily office can be found in the Episcopalian hymnal, the hymnal 1982. The hymns for the daily office are hymns 1 through 46. O splendor of God's glory bright. After the singing of a hymn, you may pray the general thanksgiving prayer, although this is optional. Following the general thanksgiving prayer, you pray one of the concluding scripture verses that are assigned. And that's all there is to it. Depending on how you decide to say the daily office, whether you decide to speak, pray silently, or chant the prayers, it takes anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes. If you liked this video and are interested in learning more about the daily office, I'd invite everybody to follow along on our Facebook page. I'll be leading us all in evening prayer every Thursday throughout the season of Lent. If you want to go even further, I'd invite everybody watching this video to sign up for our Lenten retreat at St. John's. As part of this retreat, we will be praying the daily office every single day and meeting together to discuss our experiences with it. Links to sign up for the retreat and to learn more about it are in the description of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be talking to you next week to go over the order for evening prayer. I hope that you all are staying safe and healthy. I'll be talking with you all soon, and God bless.